Hi, this is Remembering the Past, the show where we talk about people who've died recently, who've had a profound effect on our history, our society, or our culture. And in our ongoing series on Nobel Prize winners, tonight we're going to talk about Gunter Blobel, who died recently at the age of 81. Dr. Blobel was a cell physiologist who was awarded the 1999 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discovery that proteins have intrinsic signals that govern their transport and localization in the cell. Proteins, molecules composed of chains of amino acids, play a crucial role in life processes in our cells. Proteins are continuously being transported through membranes or walls that both separate the cell from its surroundings and separate the inner parts of the cell, the organelles. In 1975, Dr. Blobel showed that in certain cases, amino acids in a protein serve as an address label that determines where a protein is to be delivered. Amino acid sequences determine whether a protein is to be passed through the membrane out of the cell or into an organelle or is to be built in the membrane. The lay press has termed this the protein zip codes of the cell. So in layman's terms, this is how proteins move in and out of the cell and how they move between internal structures within the cell. Here is the Nobel Committee to describe Dr. Blobel's work. Dear Nobel laureates, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor and pleasure to introduce to you this year's recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Med or Medicine. Dr. Günther Blobel. The Nobel Assembly at the Karolinska Institute has awarded the prize to Dr. Blobel for his discovery that proteins have intrinsic signals that govern their transport and localization in the cell. The discipline of cell biology was born during the first decades after the Second World War. The technique of electron microscopy was new. The cell could be studied at high resolution and new organelles were discovered. In parallel, cellular organelles could be isolated by cell fractionation and their biochemical composition and properties could be revealed. These remarkable accomplishments were recognized with the Nobel Prize in 1974 to Albert Claude, Christian de Duve, and Georges Pallade. Günther Blobel's discovery represents a logical continuation of, but also an extraordinary development beyond the work which was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1974. In general, it may be said that Günther Blobel has moved the discipline of cell biology from descriptive analysis to molecular experimentation. Günther Blobel was born in 1936 in Schlesien, then a part of Germany. He graduated as an MD from the University of Tübingen in 1960 and a few years later, he moved to the United States, where he obtained his PhD degree in oncology in 1967 at the McArdle Laboratory at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. The same year, he joined George Pallades Laboratory at the Rockefeller Institute for postdoctoral training to be promoted only two years later, and he has been at Rockefeller ever since. George Pallade had previously established the principles for the transport of newly synthesized proteins out of the cell. The proteins are first delivered into a heavily folded membrane system, the endoplasmic reticulum, and are subsequently transferred to the surface of the cell. Ginter Global set out to understand the molecular mechanisms involved. Together with David Sabatini in 1971, he formulated the brilliant signal hypothesis which stated that proteins for export contain an intrinsic signal that directs them to and across the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. Most importantly, Blobel also developed a multi-component cell-free system that allowed him and his co-workers to prove the validity of the hypothesis. Finally, Ginter Blobel realized early on that the signal hypothesis could be extended and he proposed that proteins contain topogenic signals, that is, signals that not only govern the transport of proteins out of the cell, but also direct proteins to their proper locations within the cell. Ginter Blobel's achievements have had an enormous impact on modern cell biology, as they explain on the molecular level how a cell is formed and maintained. Many processes leading to human disease can now be better understood, and protein drugs can be more efficiently produced. Here is the actual awarding of the Nobel Prize 
to Dr. Blobel in Stockholm in 1999. And now the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine will be presented by Professor Ralph Pettersson, adjunct member of the Nobel Assembly at the Karolinska Institute and chairman of the Nobel Committee for Physiology and Medicine. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, Imagine a large factory that manufactures thousands of different items in millions of copies every hour and that promptly packages and ships each one of them to waiting customers. Naturally, to avoid chaos, each product requires a clearly labelled address tag. Günther Blobel is being awarded this year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for having shown that newly synthesised proteins, analogous to the products manufactured in the factory, contain built-in signals or address tags that direct them to their proper cellular destination. Dr. Günther Blobel, your discovery that proteins contain built-in signals that govern them to correct uh, their correct destination within cells and across membranes has had a profound impact on our understanding how a cell and its organelles are assembled and maintained. Your work has also laid the foundation for modern molecular cell biology. On behalf of the Nobel Assembly at the Karolinska Institute, I uh, warmly congratulate you and I now ask you to step forward to receive your Nobel Prize from the hands of His Majesty the King. Shortly after he received the Nobel Prize, Dr. Blobel sat down and discussed the essential component of his work, the cell. First, physiology or medicine. What we have worked on is, is a very basic aspect of how cells work. Not a human cell only, but also an animal, an, an all animal cells, plant cells, even bacteria. Cell is a unit of life, and how does it deal with organizing itself? It is not just the mail to send something to this or this address, but it is because it also deals with how membranes are put together. It really deals with the structural organization of the cell. How does it organize itself into the various compartments and how does it uh, maintain this organization? And that is a very fundamental aspect about how all cells work. Now the medical benefits uh, of that is of that we, for instance, in the production of proteins that, <clears throat> let's take insulin, which was formerly gotten from slaughterhouses and was extracted, can now be made in bacteria. And you can uh, use a zip code to get the, bacteria, the insulin uh, out of the bacteria and then can separate it from bacteria much easier. And, and there's not only the insulin, there are many uh, growth factors like erythropoietin, of which uh, last year $2 billion were sold alone important for people who suffer anemia due to um, kidney failure and um, dialysis patients in particular. So this, uh, there is a huge market of medicines which uh, has been developed, which is in part, in part based on the discoveries which were made. And, uh, there will be many more. It, it will be very important in the understanding of diseases. We already know that some diseases are caused by mistargeting of proteins or by by improper traffic uh, patterns in the proteins. So uh, this is just what we have what we have studied so far is just the tip of the iceberg. There will be many many other diseases. Uh, that will have uh, as a cause uh, irregular traffic patterns or inability of the cell to of the cell to organize itself properly. In a way, the fact that you can now make recombinant proteins in bacteria and in yeast, and you can will be able to make many, not just insulin and erythropoietin, and many other growth factors. You can easily purify and you can make it in large quantities. This is a huge quantum jump. The fact that you had to previously go and uh, isolate them from slaughterhouse animals, right? it's, it's, uh, this contamination, uh, is, is a huge um, a jump forward, which, which will help uh, all of medicine. Now, it's not only based on my discoveries, obviously. It's based on the fact that you can make recombinant DNA and that you can express recombinant DNA in bacteria and so on and so on. But you, we have learned how to get the protein out of the sun, and therefore we can purify it much easier. That is a very, from a practical point of view, I had lunch at Upjohn Pharmacia, 
and they're producing growth hormone, and this is half a billion dollars worth of growth hormone that is being produced in bacteria. Right? And they are making now factor eight, or they have already made factor eight, which is on the market, which has something to do with blood clotting. So therefore, a, a large number, a whole repertoire of proteins will be produced in this way. You will, you may also be able to to engineer cells and to get, get certain proteins into certain organelles and make them more efficient, and that may be very important for cell therapy in the future. So will, there will be future benefits to come down the line uh, as a result of understanding how the cell works. But I would like to emphasize that we are far away from understanding the cell. I don't like to give the impression that this now we understand the cell. We are very, very far away from understanding the cell. We may never completely understand the cell. We may hit something like the uncertainty principle in physics where while we are trying to measure something in the cell, we disturb something and therefore the measurement that we are getting is faulty. So, but, but we are not at that level yet. We, we, we still are trying to map out very basic functions of the cell. And we will have to understand the entire repertoire of functions and, and, and what principles the cells use in order, for instance, to find out how is a normal cell distinct from a cancer cell. Because at the moment we treat cancer cells and try to kill cancer cells, but we don't know the differences precisely. And therefore, we kill many normal cells too. So we have to learn about cells. Cells is the unit, basic unit of life, and we have to learn how they work. And what we discovered is a common principle which works in all cells. Well, much of what he predicted nearly 20 years ago has come true. Here he talks a little bit about the scientific method, and you'll hear how similar he sounds to people like Richard Feynman. There are beautiful hypotheses killed by ugly facts. And so one has to also um, pursue it and see whether one can uh, get evidence for or against it. And it's wonderful to take a phenomena and then think about them and then imagine how it could possibly work, and then see whether one can provide some evidence for or against it. Well, Dr. Blubba was a very humble person, and I think part of that came from growing up in wartime Germany at the end of the war as the Soviets overran the country. And he didn't fall prey to what a lot of today's scientists fall prey to. Their egos allow them to think that because they're experts in one field, they're experts in a lot of fields, and so they pontificate on questions that, basically speaking, they don't really know that much about, whether it's politics or completely unrelated fields of science. Here, Dr. Blubbo mentions that. I have noticed in this last eight weeks that a lot of people have asked me for my opinions. And one thing I want to be very careful about, I don't want to give opinions that are not based on facts. I don't want to now discuss uh, atomic disarmament and all sorts of other um, problems, societal problems, economic problems, other problems that uh, we are afflicted with, which I haven't studied because I, I also I like to hypothesize. Um, in the end, I would like to have facts. That's refreshing. I just want to make one final point on Dr. Blobo. You often wonder what Nobel Prize winners do with their prize money. Well, Dr. Blobo transferred the entire amount, roughly $1 million, to an account belonging to the city of Dresden, Germany, which of course was firebombed by the Allies in the late stages of the war. He earmarked the money for the restoration of the city's cathedral and the construction of a new synagogue. In 1945, from a refugee camp outside town, he witnessed the Allied bombing of the city and the eventual collapse of the massive Dresden Frauenkirche. Later that year, his oldest sister was killed at age 19 in an air raid. It was one of the great pleasures of my life to donate the entire sum of the Nobel Prize in memory of my sister Ruth Blobel to the restoration of Dresden, he wrote at the time of the award. Well, I'm going to close on that note. I want to thank my producer and IT genius, Sid Tepps. Dr. Blobel was born in what was then Eastern Germany and is now Western Poland, and his birthplace is less than three hours from Frederick Chopin's birthplace in Poland. So we're going to close tonight with a little bit of Chopin played by Arthur Rubinstein, the military Polonaise. Mm -hmm.